mentioned, what we wanted to do was look at what the, to the extent possible, what the empirical evidence base says about what um, what teacher preparation components components um, lead to higher teacher retention, to better outcomes for K to 12 students, and then um, wrap all of those components into a model. Um, and so it is evidence-based, but it's also idealistic. So we know that there are components of this that are already happening and sort of being um, being encouraged or mandated by the state, but we also know there are components that are not yet being um, implemented, and that's sort of what we want to um, call out to folks and say that maybe they are idealistic right now, but let's at least have a conversation about how do we get to where we know we need to be. Um, and so really this model, what set, we think sets it apart, is the comprehensiveness of it and this kind of thinking of um, teacher preparation as a three-year continuum. And so, as the title suggests, the, the focus of this model is really on deep partnerships between um, teacher preparation programs and the districts and schools where teachers are actually doing their teaching. Um, it comes out of prior research that the Reading Center did about teacher preparation where we asked both districts and institutions of higher ed to talk about their partnerships, and they told us that where they had people Institutions of higher ed said, well, we have teachers placed in these districts, these are our partners. And then the, the district said, well, we work with, you know, we get teachers from these universities, but we never heard about an exchange of ideas between the two um, sectors. We didn't hear about how the programs informed one another, how they changed. We, we heard this from districts, so now we're doing this, and, and we meet regularly with our partners, and we're part of the same team. We didn't, we didn't hear that kind of language, so we sort of, um, you know, identified this as an area of focus and an area of improvement um, where we felt like both institutions of higher ed and the districts where, where their teacher candidates are placed could benefit from a tighter collaboration and could do their work better if they were doing it together. <laughs> um, and so we see this sort of deeper reciprocal relationship kind of blurring these lines between thinking of teacher candidates if they're in the teacher preparation program, it's ours for higher ed. These are our candidates for a year. Then we turn them over to the districts, and they become the school's candidates for induction and mentoring. What we wanted to say is, what if we thought of ourselves as all part of one team? And these candidates are our teachers for the, the span of at least three years. And we sort of blur these lines between district faculty and institutions of higher ed faculty. Um, which is nice to say, but has big implications. There are reasons that hasn't happened yet. Um, so let's just dive into what we see as kind of the beginning stages. And this is important. So this is the sort of pre-preparation um, program um, steps. So what we saw is, and this is, Liz was um, talking a little bit about this in her remarks, um, how this partnership could yield, this conversation between districts um, and program providers could yield a better sense of what the workforce needs are. So if districts said, we need, you know what we really need is special ed teachers. And the institutions of higher ed would, you know, could sort of look at that and say, well, you know, maybe there's some work that we can do to counsel folks to, to be in, um, you know, to consider special ed. So it's this matching of the teachers who are being prepared with the actual needs of the workforce. Um, and it's it's in terms of not just the type of teacher, but the characteristics of the teachers. So what do dis what kinds of personal characteristics, interpersonal skills, do the districts say that they need for teachers to be successful and effective in their context? And then what can the teacher preparation programs be doing to foster those kinds of skills? Um, and then there's this pre-service pre orientation, which we're kind of seeing as a four to six week um, pre um, kind of orientation program, and um, it it's where there's work um, that gets done matching mentor teachers, um, university mentor teachers, and district um, based mentor teachers with candidates, really being thoughtful about um, grade level, subject area, um, letting them spend time together to build relationships with one another before they're launched into the school year. Um, and, and sort of don't have a moment to, to talk with one another. Um, and 
also this idea of orienting candidates to the culture of the schools in which they're going to be placed. So this is the kind of meat of the model, the three-year continuum. Um, so we see this as, you know, as I said, as thinking of this as, as a progression of teachers over the course of three years. Um, and, um, and, and we see this as, so there are some, just to, to spend a little bit of time on this first piece. So we see the partnership functioning together to co-develop the curriculum that the candidates um, that the candidates have, and then also to co-teach it. So that has implications for institutions of higher ed, where there might be a, a university faculty member who is considered a professor of practice, which would be considered a tenure track position, and um, but would would be a, a professor who would spend most of her time in his or her time in the schools um, developing coursework and teaching right alongside the district. Um, mentors and teachers. So it is a shift, um, and we and we acknowledge that there's going to be, need to be in order for this model to work. There's going to need to be a changing a change in rules um, at the university side. Um, another key piece is this idea of co supervision and mentoring. You can see we envision that there would be um, mentorship happening from the institutions of higher ed as well as from mentors at the district, and that those folks would be working hand in hand. So again, this idea of everyone's on the same team, so you're getting feedback from the, the folks at the district that is in line with the feedback you're getting with folks at the university, which is not always the case. Um, so this idea that everyone's on the same page, and that there is this ongoing, regular um, support and evaluation that is just part of how teachers are prepared. Um, as Liz was mentioning, we envisioned that the, um, the new educator evaluation framework would begin in the teacher preparation program here so that um, teachers would be familiar with it in their internship that first year, their internship, and then that they would sort of grow into it over the course of the, the progression of their next two years. So what, what we're seeing is, you know, in a lot of cases what's happening already is that there's a full year internship and then there are two years of induction or mentoring. We wanted to see it as more of a seamless progression where everything is um, is coordinated through these partnerships and sequenced over time to sort of bring teachers <coughs> up into being fully effective professionals at the end of three years at the time that it, um, tenure decisions are made. Um, and this idea of peer support and feedback where um, teachers are in schools in cohorts where they're encouraged to learn together, um, where they're they consider themselves as part of a, a team in a school where there are enough of them in a school to have a, a peer network, and that together they would conduct research in their classrooms. So they would, um, it's this, you know, this beginning um, data analysis work. So I have this problem in my classroom and I want to get together with you, my peers, and analyze it, figure out what's happening, and then talk with you about what we can do differently to make changes, make improvements for our, for our students. Um, this last piece is really um, a key difference um, in this model, and as and is Liz said, is what the um, program, the new program regulations, program approval regulations are moving toward. Um, greater emphasis on um, assessment and accountability. Um, and we see this as, um, as more powerful so the, the kinds of data that Liz was talking about, was talking about um, that the state now has access to and will now be providing to program, um, teacher preparation programs, um, is more powerfully analyzed if it's done in partnership with the districts and the program providers. So it's, it's great if the program providers are now getting data on how their candidates are doing, but it's much more powerful if they are bringing that data to a team that they're already a part of, and talking with the district's team about how, this is what our data say, and how can we work together um, to make improvements? How can we unpack this? How can we work together to sort of, um, you know, figure out what's going on and make it better? And it's just a more powerful use of that data if it's if it's used in this partnership model. 